Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca Valera and today on The Little Things, we're gonna be talking about five excuses that people give themselves when they're thinking about moving up to the big house. Let's do this. Like, oh my gosh, guys, it's going to be like such a hassle to have to, you know, get my house ready to sell and then at the same time be looking to buy again. I mean, like, what a hassle. So traditionally, people have had to sell their homes and then buy the next one. However, there are a couple different ways that you can actually get around that if that is a hassle for you. One of the ways is uh, to go through an iBuyer program. Here at Keller Williams, we have a Keller Offers program now to where they will actually give you an offer to purchase your home for cash. You pick your move out date and you get extra representation for that process. If you're using companies like Open Door, uh, Zillow Offers, or any of those types of iBuyer programs, they're not gonna give you any representation. So Keller Offers is a great way to uh, investigate and see uh, if, if it's really, you know, thousands of dollars is worth that extra load of hassle to you. The other uh, thing that I've seen people do all the time is instead of selling their house, they take the cash out, put it in the next one, buy that house, and then sell their house afterwards. Uh, or sometimes they'll put maybe, um, instead of the whole 20% down, let's say you have enough money to put 3% down on a conventional loan, which is a great start, and then you go buy your next house, and then after you, after you make your purchase, you can then go and sell your house when it's empty, there's no kids there, there's no pets there that you have to take in and out. It, it really does alleviate a lot of the pressure and a lot of the hassle that comes with the traditional way of having to sell and then buy. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm just so afraid. Like, I'm so afraid to sell my house because then where am I gonna go? I mean, if it sells quick, then where do I go when I'm trying to find my next one? I mean, I don't have family that's in town, so what am I supposed to do? It's so scary. I know it can be such a scary thing to have to actually sell your house and then buy the next one, but the good news is if you have a great real estate agent that is guiding you through that buy process first and saying, okay, look, let's start the search, let's get you pre-approved way before we even sell your house, so that way you can get a good idea of where you want to live now, scope out those neighborhoods and figure out where you want to be and what your price range is going to be. So that way, whenever you actually do sell your house, you know those neighborhoods already that you're gonna wanna live in, and chances of you finding something that you really like in one of those neighborhoods during that time is really high because typically most buyers are only gonna look anywhere from six to eight homes before they make that educated, informed decision as to yes, this is the one that we're gonna, this is the one that we're gonna buy, this is the one we're gonna purchase. So going, so talking with your real estate agent about your next steps and what's happening after you sell your house is very key to overcoming this fear of having to sell and then buy. Because if you're in good hands, it should make you feel more confident and comfortable. Now, not everything goes as planned whenever you're trying to do that. So it is always good to have a plan B in place just in case something you know, goes awry and something doesn't turn out as perfect as we would like whenever we're trying to sell and then make the purchase. Like, oh my gosh, I don't think that we can afford another house. I mean, we're already paying like so much every month. I mean, the next one should just be larger. Like, I don't think that we can take that on right now. Like, I'm just stressed out about the financing. So figuring out where you stand on your finances by looking at the net that you're gonna potentially net on the sale of your home, looking at all of your expenses for the sale, looking at all your expenses for the buy, should help you and give you a good idea as to 
what you're going to be able to pre-qualify for. So are you going to use all of that net to put into your next home? Or are you going to take a part of it and put it into a savings account uh, whenever you uh, sell your property? Those are all questions that you need to be asking yourself. And if you have a spouse especially, you need to be talking with them about it. So that way they don't come up later and surprise you. I think that's the biggest fear that most people have over finances is the uh-oh, the surprise uh, at the very end. And if you're talking with a loan officer or a great real estate agent, they should be able to guide you through the finances and the financial piece of having to sell your home and then making your purchase. Like, oh my gosh, did you not know that my kids are like still in school? Like, I don't wanna move them uh, into a different school in the middle of the year, that's crazy. I mean, who like does that? I would first look to see what homes are selling for in your neighborhood. And then also, if you could maybe even move up within your neighborhood so you don't have to worry about schools at all. When you're looking at schools uh, and the zoning for those schools, the elementary schools will usually have like the smaller pockets, right? And then when you go to when the how they're zoning the middle schools, it's a little bit bigger, right? So you have a little bit bigger area to look for homes. And then when you have high schoolers, you have an even bigger area to look for. It is primarily because there are more elementary schools, fewer middle schools, and then even fewer high schools. So. The zoning is going to be obviously structured differently for for each neighborhood, but if I can help you find a home that's in within your neighborhood that's exactly the amount of bedrooms and bathrooms that you need, why would you wait? Why not take a look and see so that way you really know if you can afford to move up in your neighborhood or not? I'm like, like oh my gosh I'm like so picky like I don't think that I'm gonna be able to find my next home I mean I'm just like I want everything like totally updated and it has to be you know so clean and I mean like I'm just so picky like it has to be a decent sized backyard you know I want a community pool maybe um, so I just don't think that I'm gonna find it you know like if I put my house in the market and then I don't find anything that I like you know what am I gonna do I'm, am I gonna rent an apartment like ew I'm not gonna do that so here's the trick knowing what you want up front before you put your house on the market it really is a great strategy for getting your dream home it really is the other thing that I would advise you to do is to look at new construction. With new construction, the pickiest person in the world gets to design their own home, hello, and you always wanna make sure that you have a real estate agent with you and take them with you to the model home to meet the sales rep because you get free representation whenever you're buying a new construction home. Well, that's all for today's episode. If this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it and share it with your friends. I hope you have a fabulous, fabulous day, and I'll see you next time on The Little Things. I mean, what a hassle. <sighs> your home and then buy the next one? Oh my gosh, car. <laughs> really? Okay. All right, so I understand. Really guys, it's not a race. What is it?